Dixie Carter thoughts when she came into the business. What do you think she brought? How did you rank her as a boss? Oh, yeah. In the early days, I, I was very happy because she, uh, I didn't, let's see, I, I didn't know the background with her and Jeff, but when she was brought in, um, you know, she really, uh, I mean, she saved us in, in a lot of ways. Um, her and her company, Trifecta, they were a marketing agency. Um, so I, I think they were brought in for that purpose, but then there was interest shown where, um, you know, she was interested in, in buying the company and, and in those early days, you know, she wasn't looking for, um, any on-camera roles or to be part of the writing team or anything like that. So she kind of, she, uh, took control, but she left the wrestling part to Jeff and, and the others. Um, so, and I had a great relationship, Storm and I both did. Um, you know, we would spend some time at the office at times. Uh, the office was based out of Nashville. Um, had some lunches with her, um, her and her husband. Um, then when we got the chance to meet her mother and father, that was that was always a pleasure. Um, so I, I was I, I loved what Dixie was bringing at the time. I I think in much later years uh, it got to be a little out of control. But um, but yeah, uh, for the time I spent with her, I always got along with Dixie and. Um, yeah, I thought she was she was great for the company. When you say in the later years, are you saying like the post Chris Harris in TNA years, basically? I would say that, yeah, because um, she wasn't necessarily featured much um, when I was still around. Um, uh, I don't know if she was uh, politicking for that. I'm not sure, but later, yeah, I mean, we were seeing her more on camera, and she wanted to be more of a of, of a one of the stars and. Um, I wasn't there, so I can't talk from experience, but um, that's just, I, I don't want to say it never works, but it's just so overly done, um, you know, putting the, putting the owner of a company on TV that um, it just, it, it, I think that, that spelled the dying days of uh, the, the, the TNA. Well, it's always heel, isn't it? Uh, it worked twice. Eric Bischoff was great in the initial. Vince McMahon was the best. Yeah. Then oh, yeah. It's 20 I mean, years since. Yeah. And then uh, everybody's trying to do that. With Dixie, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this at you, and you tell me if I'm miles off, is Dixie didn't know very much about wrestling, and basically people or more savvy wrestlers would know to buddy up to her to basically, not you know, not like basically become her friend, and then they would get the better better treatment on television. I mean, would that be fair to say? I would say that's fair. Um, I wasn't in the conversations, but I did see a lot of the, we call them the names in the business. I saw them buddy up to her, which, um, so they're certainly in her ear. And if they know how to work the, the system, um, they're going to, they're going to feed her, her, her full of ideas and, why this would work instead of this. And I mean, just she's going to hear that so much that if she's not a wrestling person, she's going to believe and she's going to, then that's going to become her voice. And um, so I think that, yeah, th th there was a lot of probably conflict going on with that, but I did witness a, a lot of, a lot of times where um, her having a, a glass of wine with, uh, you know, some of the, some of the stars we have. Quite a tall man, maybe with the initials. Yeah, I KM. remember that. I do remember that. Yeah, there was a. I could definitely. Uh, Kevin Nash is a charmer, and so he can. Uh, he can definitely work his way into that. So um, credit to him, man. But uh, yeah, I just think a lot of people were in her ear, and when you're when you're getting filled with things like that, then uh, it's you're going to wind up being the voice, and uh, and so she can she can make things happen. So that that I, I would say that definitely happened on, on multiple occasions.